Hey, Brandon. How are we doing, Daniel? Um, good. Just uh, defensively, you know, you finally had your starting secondary out there and you were able to, you know, get off the field on third down. Just did this, in terms of what you were able to do and the results, was this closer to what you expect defensively from your guy? Yeah, I think you bring up a good observation. It felt great to play with our starting secondary for one of the few times this season. And I think um, our run defense directly impacted our third down defense. We were able to play the way that we started out this season playing and uh, just excited the way our group competed today. I thought our coaching staff prepared our players extremely well. And then those guys came to play today. I think our secondary performed at a high level uh, and Derwin leading the way. And then I felt like in the run front, you can't say enough about our front seven and our secondary and the way we attacked the run front today. Uh, we tackled extremely well, set edges. And uh, I think that had a direct impact on the way we played on third down. What, what did you feel like was the difference with the run defense today after what happened last week? Just, uh, Daniel, I thought just a lot more penetration. I felt like we were playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage. I felt like our edges uh, were a lot more physical. And then I felt like in the secondary, um, we just, we tackled a lot better and fit uh, at the second level at linebacker uh, a lot more decisively. And so it, it was just, you know, to play good run defense, Daniel, you've heard me talk about it. You got to play team run defense. It's not just the front. It's, it's all 11 guys. And uh, I really felt like it was a team operation today. And you know, how much respect I have for both of those runners. Um, they're, they're really, really good, and uh, it was a good performance by us today. Um, you started Trey at right tackle over Storm. Was, was Storm not feeling 100%? What, what went into that decision? Yes, sir, Daniel. He just, uh, coming off the COVID, just we, he was here in an emergency only today, uh, but Trey was able to hold the rope for us. Uh, you know, everybody's coming off this COVID list a little bit differently, as you guys are, you know, becoming aware of, and we just want to make sure that uh, our guys' uh, health and safety is at the top priority for us and uh, Trey did a nice job filling in today and um, you know really proud of him. And, uh, any update on, on Corey? Yeah Corey's back just tightened up in the game and uh, was not able to return. Uh, we'll know more I think tomorrow just saw the guy uh, seems to be doing well uh, but we'll have more information uh, about about his back tomorrow. And just last one for me what what has Andre meant to your special teams? Well this guy's one of the, you know, to me, one of those in-season acquisitions that you're really fortunate to come upon. Um, we've had two of them with him and Dustin. Uh, this guy, besides the production um, as a returner, has just brought a, a level of professionalism to our team. We have a really young special teams unit, and just his level of professionalism and what he's been able to create from a culture standpoint, uh, and then the production on the field. You know, you guys saw a couple weeks ago uh, at Kansas City what he did for us. Uh, you saw today opening up the game and then obviously being able to finish one later. Uh, it's just, it's been a huge lift for our football team. He's one of us. He's the type of guy um, that you love seeing every single day. Uh, and uh, I'm really proud of him. He got a game ball today. Thanks, Brandon. Thank you. Cam. Uh, congratulations, coach. Thank you. Um, so in regards to Andre Roberts, um, as you mentioned, he had a big one against Kansas City, was able to finish off the one today. Um, talk about the, the boost of energy. I, I, I didn't count everybody that went out there, but I think half the team ran into the end zone to celebrate with them. And, and talk about that energy and what that means to your squad. Yeah, I think, I think um, you know, I kind of touched on it with, with Daniel Cam. It's just this guy's got an impact beyond just the production on the field. Uh, he's been an outstanding teammate. He's been able to come right into our culture, our way of doing things, and just fit right in. And then really take these younger special teams guys and really help bring them along with our coaching staff. You know, he's like having another coach on the field. And he's seen a lot. He's lived through a lot. And, you know, this guy's been a multi-time, all-pro, Pro Bowl caliber player. And uh, he's meant a lot to me. And uh, just really proud of him. And uh, like I said, just game ball to him today. He was fantastic. Um, there was an initial pass interference call that was made. It was right in front of you on Asante Samuels. And then it looked like you talked to the ref into calling a PI on Sutton as well. It, was there some conversation in there? Did you convince the ref to change the call? Uh, you know, I was trying. I, I, I don't think I needed to. Um, the, the back judge actually did an outstanding job. He had a really good vantage point of what happened uh, with Cortland and Asante there. And we were able to kind of get it as a uh, double foul offsetting. I did not feel like, in my opinion, that Asante fouled him. Um, but, you know, the back judge did. I felt like an outstanding job running the show there and, um, you know, making the appropriate call.
Um, what's your thoughts on uh, Jerry Tillery? Um, he made some big plays out there. Um, would you, do you see the game slowing down or him fitting into your scheme finally? Yeah, Cam, I think we talked about it uh, during the week. I think he's just a work in progress as a player and we're committed to him and uh, he's gonna continue to improve because it means a lot to him. And I think that transition for us um, for us, is, is it's taken some time. He has played well this season. And I want to make that very clear. He has played well for us this season. And the challenge for him is to continue to do it to his standard every single time he goes out there. And um, I think that he's one of these guys that uh, is a young player. He's improving. Um, I know his coach, Giff Smith, and him are working really hard together. And I felt like his teammates helped pick him up today, too. You know, Justin Jones, Linval, Christian. Joey G, that group really came together and I thought brought out the best in one another today. And then lastly for me, Coach, um, they called a roughing the passer on Derwin James when it looked like he hit the, he hit the quarterback in the shoulder and then the landing was a lot more terrible than the hit, actually. Um, how did you see that play? Similarly. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Jeff Miller. I have my unmute issues here. Uh, Brandon, you guys, um, a week ago, things were quite uh, quite a bit different mood. Now you're back in control of your playoff fate here. Uh, just how big of a boost is this going into, the, into the, the final week? I was just pleased with the way we performed this week, the entire week, not just here at the game. I felt like we practiced well, we prepared well, and then at the game, Felt like we brought the, the right type of energy, the right type of focus, and had the right level of execution today at the game against the quality team. And for me, it was just, it was about this week. And, it, you know, it was about our response. And I felt like our guys answered uh, in a big way today. I'm really proud of our players, proud of our coaching staff. And uh, today we needed to play like this. And I and, uh, felt like we really showed what we're made of today as a team. But in the early in the second quarter, you had fourth and goal down uh, about the just inside the two. It looked like we've seen you go for that in a lot of situations. You, you decided to kick today. What was the decision there? Yeah, I just felt like it was going to be a possession game and really wanted uh, to make sure that we came away with points and really forced them uh, to move the field against us and score twice to beat us, score three times to beat us. Uh, so wanted to make sure that it, it, it turned into a possession game, felt like our defense was playing at a really high level and uh, didn't want to um, come up empty there uh, and wanted to make sure that we extended our lead and really forced them to execute uh, in order to beat us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Claudia. Hey Brandon, you did a good job avoiding penalties until the end of the third quarter. How much did that add to your game plans? Avoiding penalties, Claudia? Yeah. Yes, yes, I think playing clean football today, I felt like, Claudia, to your point, the penalties, as well as zero turnovers, that that was a huge storyline in the game. Uh, playing clean football allowed us to play a clean game. And uh, generally, when you play like that, you perform like that, you have 35 runs, 22 completions, no turnovers. You get a special teams takeaway, and then you score on special teams. That's generally a, uh, a good recipe. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia. Gilbert. Yeah, Brandon, sorry you were asked this question already, but on, on the fourth and goal trick play uh, from the Broncos, uh, what was your reaction to the effort from uh, Nas and Joy to prevent the, the touchdown there? Yeah, we played well on the goal line, uh, Gilbert, all season long. As you guys know, we played well down there. I think how you play down there says a lot about the competitive character of your team. And I felt like our guys really, really sold out down there. And, um, you know, certainly they had a play that's kind of designed against that sort of circumstance, but sometimes your effort, okay, and how hard you play makes up for an imperfect, you know, sort of coverage situation. And um, down in there, when you're kind of in a goal line, zero stick coverage, the guy that you don't account for is the quarterback. And um, we got to do a better job of making sure that we account for that guy. Um, but sometimes when you play the game, the way that Nas and Joey and the other nine guys played, sometimes that that can make up for you know, um, any type of coverage mistake that you make. Gotcha. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Couple more. Tyler. Hi, Brandon. Uh, Justin Herbert broke the Chargers single season record for ch touchdowns. What does that say about him uh, as a quarterback in just his second season? Well, I think that if you're a fan of history, um, it's not just a, 
any record because of the quality of the quarterbacks that have played for this football team. When you're talking about Dan Fouts, a Hall of Famer, you're talking about Stan Humphreys, you're talking about Drew Brees, you're talking about Phillip Rivers. You know, Drew Brees and Phillip Rivers are going to be first ballot Hall of Famers. Uh, Stan Humphreys is a Super Bowl quarterback. When you think about the caliber players that have played for this franchise, I think it says an awful lot. And, um, you know, Justin has worked extremely hard to earn that record. And um, it's not a coincidence that uh, these records are happening for him. It's because of the type of person he is, the type of competitor he is, and the type of player that he is. Um, today's win sets up a showdown with Las Vegas Raiders next week. Uh, what message are you going to give to your team leading up to that winner gets in game? Each week has a life of its own in the NFL. It's had a life of its own since the beginning, and that's the way we need to treat things around here. And um, the, more, the longer that we're here, the more people will realize that every week is going to feel like next, you know, this coming week. And when you have that type of intensity, that type of focus, to treat it each week like it has a life of its own, and you pour your full energy into that week, then you can be proud of what goes down. And um, you know, this week, again, was a similar week. And uh, next week um, you know, is obviously, you know, there's a lot at stake. So we're excited to compete. We're going to have to rest up and uh, learn from this tape. There'll be plenty to learn from. And uh, then we got to keep it moving to the Raiders. Last one, Helene. Hi, thank you for taking the question. Um, just to get back to Justin for a second, um, I'm curious if you have noticed him uh, developing, advancing, maturing in any specific ways this season. And if so, what, what have you noticed? Helena, uh, advancing, improving, competing in all ways. Uh, I feel like he's <clears throat> really developed as a passer. There were a couple things that happened today. You know, he's able to find the back on a couple bursts you know, we're progressing to number five in the progression. And it's just real quarterbacking against one of the top defenses in the league. The red zone touchdown uh, before the half, he really managed that sequence beautifully, uh, both with his arm and his legs. His touchdown at the end of the half, uh, Helene, was again a full progression, hitting five in the progression. And it's just real quarterbacking stuff. And I think that the guy is improving as a player in all aspects, as a player, as a leader. I think this guy, he's, he's right over here. I think this guy's really finding, um, you know, his way within our team and, and the, the example, the impact that he has on our team that he has on me. And, um, you know, he, he really does a tremendous job of setting the example every single day, Helene. And that's very, very important uh, within a football team, within an organization. Uh, really proud of him and, um, you know, certainly uh, happy for his record.